you know, million people plus potential, you know, governances and excites people to be a part of communication. So the systems are enabled for use now and some of the basic contracts are understood. That was a very rich history. Hey y'all, welcome to the Human and the Machine Crypto channel, where we talk to the teams developing some of the hottest technologies in the blockchain space around the world. My name is Hikaru, also known as a machine, a crypto junkie glued to anything and everything blockchain. So today we have Timothy Lewis, founder of DevXDAO. Timothy, how are you doing? Doing very well. How are you doing? I'm doing great as always. Good to hear. So tell us more about yourself, you know, your background, uh, how did you get into blockchain and what are you doing now? Uh, so yeah, I was uh, glued to a computer from the moment I was born. Um, helped build out different communication systems uh, from a very early age, just really loved uh, the BBS era of computing and networking, and uh, then fell in love with the internet as it, the internet started to emerge. Um, and so I really liked security, the security aspects of, of creating networks and, and network efficiency. And so I uh, built a career on network security and development. And so in the, mid, the, the, the trials through the, the mid and early 90s, uh, I also fell in love with uh, the financial side of the industry. Um, I ended up going to Wall Street and, uh, and working as a broker. Um, so training in both uh, computer science and, and financial technology led me through the early 2000s, uh, learning, learning about data efficiency and, and network efficiency. Uh, and then security really was, was the, the breadth of, of my passion. Uh, that security passion stemmed from the early readings and musings of the, mm -hmm. uh, the hacker quarterlies and the different uh, meetings that I, that, I, that I became you know, enthralled by and then the cypherpunk movement and uh, getting to be a part of mailing lists and getting to be a part of meetups and, and communicating with people that I, I admire so much from afar, but we had the communication paths to speak with. Uh, learning about um, cryptography, learning about um, security, learning about privacy, um, then, then how they relate to the different uh, efficiencies that we have in, in the greater system of the world. And that does, you know, being employed by the financial industry, I worked for um, three of the top 50 banks in the world. Um, you know, I, I grew to uh, love and despise uh, the financial industry. Uh, and as, as I got to know about uh, through the crash of 2008, where I was still employed by the banking industry, getting, getting to know about, about the emergence of Bitcoin uh, in late 2009, early 2010, and seeing that it had actually kind of broken through a new barrier, this uh, Byzantine fault tolerant uh, ability of this network to uh, emerge um, was exciting, uh, but I didn't really necessarily understand it until uh, 2012. I moved to Los Angeles and uh, started uh, understanding that there was a community there that was preaching about this, uh, the second layer of Bitcoin and um, understanding that this, this, this different things could be done with this uh, new public ledger. Uh, and so I, I, I was working in startups at the time, but then really refocused on the industry and got enthralled um, by the uh, forthcoming of these, these token sales that they were doing. They started yeah. with MasterCoin, uh, which was a, an, an amazing network to watch spin up and watching people found uh, an organization called the Bit Angels and uh, you know, mm -hmm. learning from uh, and becoming friends with Brock Pierce and Michael Turpin and David Johnston along the way. Uh, seeing these things emerge, watching them, this new network come up, this idea of uh, that this, this, this second layered network, another one, Ethereum, uh, and seeing where uh, yeah. you know, the, the, the principles and understandings like how, what Ethereum could be as this you know, world compute engine. Uh, so that was a really exciting time, 2013, 2014, as that sale had, had gone on and ended, and then people were communicating uh, about what this was going to be, uh, and then getting involved with um, the tokenization of things, uh, seeing right. what that was like in 2015, 16, 17, and then traveling the world talking about the tokenization of things and seeing the different experiments about these things. And you know, yeah. being that I had a financial background, I Sometimes as an American, oftentimes we I recognize that we weren't necessarily doing things on the compliant side of, uh, yeah. of, of, the, of the equation. Yeah. Um, but, but it's, you know, nonetheless, uh, you know, so intellectually stimulating and interesting in seeing where the Internet was moving. 
Um, so right. very glad to have taken a part as a, as a developer. Um, you know, still, like it, it woke me back up. There was no more boring days right. um, because this new technology had so many things that it could be. Uh, and, and one of those things to me has always been a, a, a freedom and, mm. and a privacy. And um, you know, it can affect so many different ways that we are able to help um, people uh, around the world and make sure that their value is understood and they can participate in this global right. intranet of value. Um, so, you know, it's been fun. Along the way, I've, I've helped create uh, different projects. I've been, uh, been around the launch of many, many, many networks, um, some good and some bad, and, and it helps build a lot of the, um, the, uh, the, the infrastructure side, the validator side of these right. networks. And um, then I got into to doing this, uh, you know, looking at the financial side. I built a, a hedge fund that we call Ikigai Asset Management. Mm -hmm. uh, so I brought, brought in a couple friends to do that. Uh, and that was, uh, that is a very successful, um, hedge fund that's, that's doing extremely well. Uh, but not necessarily my love and passion. And mm -hmm. so ultimately I, um, you know, took a step back in my own life and looked at the things that I wanted to, to do and how I wanted to build on this technology. And, um, yeah. and I'm so enthralled by, uh, DAOs and the possibility of DAOs and what they can become. And I leveraged my network and my position in uh, the, the greater ecosystem uh, to be able to found DevX DAO. And yeah. uh, this is a, I think it's a unique, um, unique DAO in the industry. Ultimately, we, we stand to, to distribute grants uh, for different token mm -hmm. economies. Uh, so right. I've got a, 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 hopefully, hopefully that catches you up. Here I go. Yeah, that was a that was a very rich history. I mean, you literally seen the evolution of the early days of the blockchain and everything. So, I'm sure there's a lot of roller coaster rides to get here, but very fascinating. So, well, everyone's seen that, that meme, right? The, yeah, the, it's always it always just changes years. Is it the the 2017 holders and the 2020 yeah. newcomers? Is it the 2015 holders and the you know 2017 newcomers? It always gives up up and down. Exactly. Yeah. Like I read the Bitcoin white paper first in uh, 2015, right? So I went through a lot of the cycles as well. And it's, I just find it fascinating how fast we're growing in this industry. And that's one thing I want to touch on today is you mentioned about DAOs, right? Decentralized autonomous organizations. Now, most of us, when we live in the normal world, you know, so-called normal, we think of organizations as a hierarchy, you know, some sort of boss or employee, um, a company and customers. However, this DAO, right, kind of redefines all of that. So can you first start with the definition of what it is? And then what are kind of like the problems that you've seen with DAOs and what is it solving? So I think that de the, the definition is, is ever evolving. Um, and I think that people uh, have different understandings of what, um, you know, even the word decentralization is yeah. and decentralized is. And when you try to define uh, what this, uh, the, this uh, new uh, type of structure is um, you know I don't think we'll have a, a, a concrete explanation for that until it it's, it moves into a place where there are standards. I think we're still pre-standardization um, for what these are, um, but ultimately it's a way to govern um, organizations in a flatter, um, you know, flat, flatter, flatter architecture, yeah. uh, allowing allowing people to create more efficiency. Um, by coming to agreement on the direction uh, of the business, either financially or, um, you know, uh, what the business does, how the business creates, what the, it doesn't even have to be business, organization does. Um, so ultimately, um, we're still trying to define it. You know, the early instantiations of these, um, we started seeing around 2014 or 2015, you'd look at the chairs or Swarm, uh, or and the mo more famously, the Dow. Um, the, yeah. These early instantiations really were um, oftentimes uh, just uh, venture pools that would have a uh, representation of value that equaled the token. Um, so there would be a, a, a large pooled uh, amount of capital from, uh, from some asset. And in the case of, a, of the DAO, it was Ethereum. And then you would return another token uh, that would represent the pooled value of uh, the initial uh, funding of the organization. And uh, in that famous instantiation, um, the, there was a, a similar time of coexistence. It was a very, very popular 
very popular experiment, uh, but there happened to be a uh, the, the code exploit that had been used uh, to uh, for, for whether you want to call it um, theft or, or friendly removal of funds uh, from the yeah. DAO. And so this was a, a very uh, offsetting experience for many people in many communities also brought to question the, um, the conduct of, of, of online and immutability and uh, those that validate these networks. Uh, so it's a, it's a very interesting um, issue and it was a very interesting problem, but that often that kind of put off the industry for a few years. People kind of were also had that setback and it was also later deemed by the SEC uh, properly yeah. so a security. Um, so yeah. you didn't know how to deal with these things. But as, as these networks have progressed, have you, as you've seen the ability to develop uh, smart contracts and then more rich understood and developed smart contracts, yeah. both on Ethereum and then on uh, all of the other networks that, that are now spawning, the... Um, the context of what you can do with these things has, has changed. And the thought that these can become more useful than just a venture pool um, really has um, started to evolve. Um, and mm -hmm. so there's different evolutions of how the governance of these things are represented, um, how they are you know, tokenized, how the value is created. And um, ultimately, you know, they can be represented and will be represented uh, by, by many different types or facets of organizations. Uh, so instead of just venture pools, um, you know, we, we are a, a grant DAO, so we are a grant mm. pool. Uh, but there's others. You'll be able to have small, you know, facets of uh, autonomous, um, you know, globally distributed engineers that may come together for a small 10-person yeah. you know, uh, organization and be able to create jurisdictional compliance and, and um, you know, uh, contractual agreements um, between uh, people globally uh, that they all agree to, um, yeah. hopefully by uh, being able to, to, to add a deficiency that might remove middle management. Uh, so you know, what I like to say is that it, it, a DAO is, uh, although it's a leaderless organization, it's an organization com uh, mm. completely comprised of leaders. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so, but there'll be there many different types. There'll be the, the the three person shops, and there'll be the, you know, million people plus potential, you know, governances that will be run. I believe one day by DAO governance systems. Yeah, it could be. I mean, there are even today, right, successful DAOs like Dash and other ones out there. So definitely, you know, just to paint an example, um, I was thinking. You know, I have a lot of friends who work for like big multinational engineering firms or whatever. You know, if they want to start a project, they have to go through this slow and dreadly process of getting approvals and budgeting and this and that. So let's say I was a developer, right? You know, smart contract. I want to build something. I have a brilliant idea, but I don't have funding. So how can I use this DevX DAO, for example, to get grants and turn my ideas into reality? Oh, great question. Um, coming to join us, coming to join us part of our community. Um, for those that don't know, uh, the, the way that DevX now spawned, um, I had been an early part of a founding team um, that was working on trying to uh, create a working theory for Casper, uh, correct by construction, Casper CBC. Uh, the team's name uh, ultimately was, was Casper Labs. Uh, they originally were working as a, a second layer uh, for Ethereum, um, but decided after um, you know, finding a... Uh, mathematical theory uh, the, that, that looked to prove CBC, but they wanted to uh, you know, break away from the Ethereum architecture and create a new layer one. Um, in this process, I had been asked to lead the community there. I have a deep history in um, you know, the open source development world, a lot of great friends and have done communities before, uh, but I initially had turned down the opportunity um, because I didn't want to see uh, a, a similar type of the previous several networks so from the 2016 to 2020 period uh, really had just our 2019 period had been um, developers as an afterthought, right? To where you had maybe six to 8% of tokenomics that were set aside that would be run by some internal foundation uh, that looked more like a VC uh, style value distribution than what the early instantiations of these networks look like. What I always talk about is in, 2013, when the crowd sale of Ethereum occurred, um, you know there were the, there was 100 devs to every speculator. 
hmm. because the scene was uh, more technical and you know didn't have the price uh, you know, thrusts that gathered you know everyone's attention. Yeah. Um, so by, by 2017 or 2018, those numbers were reversed, and by 2020, those numbers are you know, far outstretched. Uh, there's probably two or three hundred speculators to every developer in the ecosystem. Um, so when I told them I did not want to uh, partake in that, uh, the the the, op, the the management and the operations of the founders are, are dear friends of mine and amazing people. Uh, Cliff Sarkin and and, and, and Renal, they asked why, and I gave them that line that the fact that things looks different now and that developers you know didn't need to focus just on one thing; they needed to figure out where they fit in all of this, and that you know the the um, the the, the uh, the value to a developer needed to be greater and that people needed yeah. to start taking more brave risks on what to do to a dis- for a decentralized uh, developer community. And so I, I, I threw back at them, uh, Cliff had me write a paper on this and basically threw back at them the idea that um, if you want to be really brave and you want to take a massive chunk of your network and commit that to developers and allow me to go out and try to uh, develop um, a, a legally wrapped, a non-beneficiary, uh, non-profit organization mm-hmm. to try to create a DAO around distributing that uh, to all of open source, to, to being, you know, the, if, if, if everything ultimately, um, you know, we, we try to build out ecosystems, but being agnostic, allowing me to be non-tribal, um, yeah. but trying to attract developers um, globally that are just interested in building great things across the entire ecosystem. Um, that that's what I would be excited about. And you know, Renal, who is the CEO of Casper Labs, he's uh, very much aligned with the vision of decentralization. He's an absolute, he's a man of his word when he, when he believes that. And uh, he saw this as an opportunity to, uh, to, to enable something that could be extremely special. And the engine that we have now, um, we have several other donors that are looking to line up. We, we will one day be, be, be truly more agnostic and non-tribal, but it's enabled us to, you know, have this grant pool is now yeah. very sizable. Uh, so initially, when we talked about it, we, 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 through contracts and through lawyers and through agreements, um, we have 16% of the Casper Labs network to distribute uh, mm-hmm. over you know, what could be a period of you know, 100 years or more, um, you know, but, but it's you know, definitively at least six to eight. Um, so ultimately, you know, we are trying to, you know, we tried to create a, an online portal that would allow us to efficiently distribute that capital. Hmm. Right? So, so most of the other foundations, and, and oftentimes I've seen people struggle with giving value away. Oftentimes yeah. it's because they uh, have mandates to return capital on that value, whereas I think the open source ethos and ecosystem is a little bit different. I just care about there being new work that's demonstrated yeah. with value. And um, so we've created just an engine of, uh, basically, anyone who completes a grant becomes a part of the voting association, and there's value and reputation. There's a non there's a non fungible value that you earn as you um, you work your way through the system. Uh, so basically, the process is show up in our Telegram chat at, at DevXDAO, um, and you know, go get familiar with our our white paper that's in a pinned message, and get familiar with our portal. Uh, come to probably a few of the uh, the the, the, the we have community calls on Tuesday. We have grant workshop calls on Friday. Uh, really, kind of get to know some of the things that we're the directives are, are we're trying to build, trying to, to enable. Yeah. Uh, and there's kind of two different principles of these grants. Either they we've requested them, or they're our proposal. Uh, and and we have limited times for, for completing many things, and there are many stepping stones in the way. So, um, right. oftentimes, understanding what we need built first is a great idea. Uh, but then come and talk to us, and then show up on a call and. Uh, then there's an application form, and um, we have uh, Wolf Call, Dr. Wolf Call, and, and Dr. Craig Calcaterra. Mm-hmm. Um, they are the designers of uh, this reputation-based governance system for DAOs. Um, right. It's 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 one that I felt really matched as a non-beneficiary, uh, really matched the um, you know the the, the 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 truth and the meaning of, of how how this should evolve. Uh, mm-hmm. And so th- this is a non-fungible, you know, we don't have a, didn't have a token, don't have a token sale. We were lucky in the fact that we were um, initially funded through donation. And so it's right. a radically different way uh, to look at than if you are a, um, you, you have uh, investors to be responsible for. 
uh, we have a community to be responsible for, uh, which is uh, equally as, as, as uh, committed, um, but hopefully uh, with a, as a vision, a, a more clear vision of doing right by the open source developers of the world. Right. Um, so, yeah, we're we're very excited to be doing so, and welcome anyone to come out, come around to, to help us build greater tools. Our our, our goal and our mission is to mm-hmm. create better frameworks for DAOs, both legally and technically, and then help decentralize the value onto quality open source developers of the mm-hmm. donors that we have in a very efficient way. So we're trying to build more efficiencies in our in our donation system, making sure that we, um, you know have all the checks and balances to make sure that we're giving right. money to good people that are creating right. original ideas. Exactly. No, that's wonderful. I mean, grants and it really just encourages uh, innovation, right? No BS, just, hey, change the world. Yeah. yeah. So like in terms of this right now, I'm sure there's going to be many different types of ideas and projects that come to DevXDAO. Uh, what kind of projects, you know, do you personally would like to see or, you know, what, what excites you yeah. in terms of topics? So, so I'm excited. We've, we've had a number of organizations that um, basically were helping to uh, stand up as DAOs themselves. So I, I really do hope that we start to splinter in our protocol and uh, many people take um, what we're doing, build upon it, and we can build a better you know, DAO launching uh, software kit. Uh, but I, I'm very excited about many of the other things that are going on in our ecosystem. So we're, we're, we're rapidly funding a lot of the work that's going into uh, our donors network, uh, Casper, um, you know, being that they are a large part of our uh, t- you know, token pool, we're very excited to, to let that grow. So we're pushing a lot of effort into that network. Uh, we're, 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 we're converting standards, we're, we're working more on transpilers. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to uh, bring in some of the, a lot of the DeFi protocol work that's coming in. It's, it's fantastic. Um, you know, we're also we're helping fund things that are you know, bridging protocols. Uh, so super excited about some of the work that, mm-hmm. that's going on there. We've got some, you know, great announcements um, with with partners, um, you know, that, that we're, we're very excited to, to have brought on. We, we've completed a, our first probably seven or eight grants um, yeah. through the system. Uh, we've got some great security auditing names in there, QuantStamp mm-hmm. is in there, and uh, Vesper from Block. Uh, they're, they're involved and, and really love Jeff Garzik and uh, the the rest of the team there that that, that works so hard on keeping things truly uh, free and open source. Um, so really trying to find people who who, who work well with uh, the free and open source values. Um, so trying to make sure that people are what we're going to grant and understand that what we're going to grant is going to be um, you know for free software. Uh, they can yeah. build businesses on that, but um, you know understand what it is to build open source. And um, yeah, excited to be doing it. Got it. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of teams just working in the background and working, working. Um, as you meet all these different people, I'm sure like you always spot collaboration angles. So other than providing the capital grants, right, what kind of other value do you provide? Like, you know, is there networking or because I'm sure that's needed? Yeah. Well, it, it is, um, you know, and it, it all depends. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, mentoring and, and you know, I've yeah. got some um, amazing you know, younger developers that are, that are really just you know, love speaking with and trying to get them this, you know, crazy situations. There's, there's a, a dev that's come through our channels. That's, uh, you know, a young South African developer, um, that I honestly, I, I helped him figure out how to get a, uh, how to get a bank account, uh, through all of this, you know, you know, work, work on anything from that to, uh, you know, introducing people to, we've got, a, we've got relationships with a lot of different people in the ecosystem, whether yeah. they're exchanges or, you know, they're, 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 they're other developers or, you know, the, enterprise partnerships, people that really need products built. Um, the, there's the part of this is the engine, you know, so mm-hmm. trying to find the, the people that are um, going to fit into the DAO that uh, not only can contribute uh, and, and extract value, but, but also like really contribute in, in their, their, their network and uh, their desire to, um, yeah. you know, help other people. The, Part of what this is, the reputation that you earn is there is an incentive mechanism to that reputation. People will be paid based on their reputation from what the greater DAO um, you know, feels the value is appropriate uh, for reputation pay. Um, so we're trying to find people that are going to bring more value in um, and, and try to try to you know, make it a community that's, um, that's, that's uh, invigorating and, and, and excites people to be a part of communication. 
Right. No, that's wonderful because there's a lot of noise in the industry, right? There's a lot of hype and speculation, of course. And I bet probably five, 10 years from now, 90% of the projects are going to be gone, just like the internet boom. So I think really building this、uh, tightly knit people who are truly interested in building are the ones that's going to survive. So you know, we may not see the immediate results tomorrow or next week, but I think years down the road is where your organization will truly shine. And then people will look back in the history books, right? How blockchain evolved. That's wonderful.、Yeah. Uh, I would, I would, I've had many、uh, mentors and, and many、uh, you know, the, the heroes、uh, within the you know, open source and the freedom of information fight.、Um, it would be、uh, my, my, my goal out of this、um, to, to have、uh, been, been a part of distributing a large amounts of value、uh, yeah. to the, the greater open source ecosystem. You know, this, this industry isn't for, only for those. That are trying to create personal value.、Um, yeah. There's plenty of that.、Um, but、uh, what I see as a greater part of this industry is the collective value that、yeah. uh, we can all be a part of distributing. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, building this is going to take time. And as we were conversing, right, I, you mentioned a lot about projects,、uh, different teams building.、Uh, the community, oh, yes,、yeah, like when, when, when. So, can you kind of give us an idea, say, for the rest of this year? What are some、uh, hot announcements or things you can share? Yeah, you know, we're going to、yeah. give, I think, our quarter, this quarter, I think we're, we're, we're destined to give. We talk about everything in Euro dollar value. The way that we、sure. distribute our grants is that when, when, you, when, you get a, when you apply for a grant and you're going to receive a grant, the number will be negotiated in the Euro dollar value. And then you, when you complete your milestones, you receive payments in、uh, a, a, a Some odd, you know, some configuration of tokenized value from our donor pool, right? So, the, the, the total value of, of, of the percentages of, of our donors and what their accumulated value is.、Um, so, ultimately, when you receive this value,、um, you know, it, it doesn't matter where the token value or values are、um, because you can, if necessary for your life,、um, you know, be able to,、uh, to, to, to move around. But right now, our value that we're、uh, on target or, or You know, kind of committing to distribute during this next quarter, I think it's somewhere near 40 million euros.、Um, so there's a, wow, there's、okay. a lot of value yeah, that yeah, we have、sizable. to. Yeah.、Um, yeah. So, I mean, right, right now our total fund is、um, somewhere near 600 to 700 million euro value.、Um, so we're hoping to, to, to grow this and we're hoping to continue. And my goal is that、uh, this is a never ending fund、uh, that, that lasts many years. Eons beyond my, you know, my、yeah. immortal being, and、uh, we give away you know, eventually hundreds of billions of dollars.、Uh, but、yeah. ultimately, this year we're starting with 40. You know, we've got some great projects. Uh, I'll, I'll mention one that I really like a lot. Ruben Daniels、uh, has a project called Memory、uh, that, I, that I really like.、Uh, and, and Memory is a,、um, it is, it's a, a project that will allow people to collect, their, collect and own、uh, their, their, their personal data as they travel across the internet. Mm-hmm. Similar to what Tim Berners Lee is working on now.、Uh, but what Ruben's memory is doing is it's, it's collectivized a group of about 4,000、uh, machine learning engineers to create、um, plugins to analyze this data and to sell this data for you if you choose to,、mm-hmm. uh, to do different things with your data.、Um, and、uh, it's, a, it's a brilliant, highly secure, awesome community that is going to、um, you know, fork our governance protocol. Uh, for their community and, and their direction of their governance. And、mm-hmm. they are going to be、uh, you know, distributing、um, you know, grants of their own right、uh, to that community. So, super excited about that. I think that's interesting.、Yeah. Um, you know, working on some other,、um, you know, I, I am now interested in the,、um, you know, where in the DeFi space,、uh, you know, the, the unlocking value and, and unlocking、um, swarms of value.、Uh, so, Vesper has come in,、uh, and there are a few other. Organizations that are coming in. You know, I like seeing this bridge liquidity pool、yeah. work that goes on. So,、um, I've got friends of mine that are working on some、uh, Thor chain bridges、uh, that I think are、yeah. super Cross interesting. Cross chain is going to blow. Yeah. 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 I, I'm really, really interested in、uh, the, the, the world of atomic swap and、yeah. um, you know, some of the breakthroughs that have occurred、uh, that have stemmed from the Monero community have been、yeah. fantastic to see. So,、yeah. Looking forward to funding a lot of those projects. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just as excited as you are now. Like, just so many coming up and cross chain atomic swaps. 
yeah, and even DeFi. And I'm just really uh, looking forward to see what we can really see yeah, instead of just talk. Yeah. That, uh, the systems are enabled for use now, and yeah. some of the basic contracts are understood. Uh, so we're starting to see kind of this second generation of what do we do just beyond tokenized contracts yeah. uh, and seeing some of the gaming space evolve. I mean, we've seen the, the beginnings of the uh, the NFT and the collectible, the art world, the, the, the real world, virtual world property juxtaposition. Yeah. Um, this is this all beginning. And next boom, we'll see the ticketing come on, understanding how ticketing will be. You know, we, we, we take out a lot of the, uh, the the fraud in the industry as well. So right, seeing that's right. important too. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, unfortunately, time does fly, you know, when we're learning a lot. So this uh, interview does have to conclude. But, you know, thank you, Timothy, so much for being here. Um, I truly learned a lot. I hope the community does as well. Um, again, be sure to join the DevX style socials and really learn about, if you have an idea, right, how you can build and get this grant as well. So thank you, Timothy. And uh, we hope to see you next time. Well, thank you for having me here anytime you want. It's great to talk to you. All right. Cheers. Goodbye now. Bye. Wow. So that was a very, very dense call on uh, DAOs, Decentralized Autonomous Organizations. Um, you know, Timothy is very experienced, let's say that, seasoned in the industry. He's seen like pretty much every part of the process. And what's interesting is we kept talking about DAOs, right? But he even said it's not clearly defined and it's evolving, which I can personally agree with. So I bet even next year, you know, two, three down, years down the road, the definition of DAO will change and we'll see what exactly it means to the world. But I, I really do like how they're giving out grants, right? And really just encouraging real technology and communities to build. So honestly, all I can say is this is a great platform. Um, again, it's nonprofit. There's really, you know, nothing to lose. And I highly encourage all of you guys, whether you're a developer or not, as long as you have an idea, why don't you take that step forward and take advantage of these grants out there? So, yeah, um, I love talking to these types of people. And again, thanks to Timothy for today's conversation. So again, be sure to like our video, um, share with your friends and family, and subscribe for more of these great content as we speak to industry leaders. So that's it for today's Human and Machine channel. Um, we'll see you next time.